The day has finally come when we get to play another Spider-Man game on PC. That's right, it is time for us to play Spider-Man Miles Morales on PC. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge fan of these PlayStation ports that they've been doing recently. Not only do these games normally look really, really good on PS5, but to bring them over to PC where they can run natively at 4K or 4K upscale through DLSS at over 90 frames per second. I mean, it just, it's badass. Load times are crazy, crazy quick. And this game is natively supported on Steam Deck. So you can once again play a holiday themed Spider-Man game on the go, which is just, uh, it's tremendous. Now for these opening sections, I'm gonna leave the display indicator on the screen just so you can see what it's running like uh, natively again i'm pushing this thing at 4k dlss is set to quality and it's running very smoothly i gotta give them some credit there of course with the dualsense controller plugged in to your pc you can enjoy all of the haptic feedback features that were on playstation 5 which personally was my biggest concern with a lot of these ports that we would lose access to the controller and all of the the benefits that the dualsense brings but it's all supported it's all here and so far i gotta be real the quality of this port is pretty impressive, at least in terms of stability. And just to show you some details, if we pull open the settings menu, we can go to display and graphics. We can customize our display options here. I'm playing on a 4K 144 Hertz monitor, which is why I have DLSS set to quality because you pretty much need DLSS to run 4K at any reasonable frame rate nowadays. If we go over with R1 to graphics, you can see that we can tweak a bunch of settings. Right now I have ray tracing turned off completely but let's fix that let's just crank this up crazy high no not very low very high and let's go ray trace reflections Ooh, it's chugging it's chugging on yep ray trace shadows medium let's go high object range what if we just crank it okay Okay, we have this thing about as cranked as you could expect it to be. We can also change field of view, which I really appreciate because I get motion sick if it's too tight. Okay, let's back out and let's see what this runs at. Okay, we dropped from like the 90s. We're now down in the 70s. Let's get in front of some glass and see what the ray traced reflections look like though and see if that affects it. Uh, uh I mean, not... We dropped down maybe 10 frames down into the high 60s. You can see the reflections are accurate, though. If we flip the camera around, it is actually a proper reflection, which is kind of fun. But even with those settings, we were still floating at like 60, 70% GPU utilization. So if we turn off DLSS and we just push this thing to its limits, what is the graphics card, the 3080, able to do natively on this thing at 100% utilization or 99, I guess? at like right around 30 to 40. It looks like we're playing on the PS4, but a damn sexy PS4, cause it is, ooh, ooh, that is sharp. I mean, yeah, the frame rate isn't where we would love it to be. It's floating around 30, but we're doing this with full ray tracing. I mean, look in the glass of the windows. You see Miles, you see him in the reflection there. How cool is that? That's that's pretty smooth. That's pretty slick if I'm being real. You know, it's always a trade-off whether you want the fidelity or the frame rate. It's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong answer as far as I'm concerned. And if you're somebody who likes the fidelity a lot more than you like the frame rates, cool, awesome, power to you. Like, do it. And it's in moments like these with the ray trace reflections of the, the square. You see that right there? We flip around. We can see all of that. It looks really good. The one thing to notice, though, look at all the trees in Central Park. Okay, you see all the trees right there? If I flip around and look in the reflection, there are no trees. There, okay, there's like four. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have to understand what the implementation of ray tracing was here. They're not going for a one-to-one -one complete, you know, copy paste what's behind you in front of you. They're not trying to do something like that. The developers understood that for the overwhelming majority of the time, you're going to be swinging through New York just like this. And you're going to be looking at the reflections in passing, just like in the, the windows as we go by them, right? This is what you're going to be seeing most of the time. Very few people, except for maybe like 
at people like me for two minutes when they first boot this up to test the settings. Very few people are actually going to be checking and comparing the reflections in the windows. Most people are just going to whiz by and be like, oh, that's cool. It looks really good. So understand I'm not saying like, oh, this is bad because the, the trees don't show up in it. You know, I'm not saying that at all. You'll also notice if you look really closely at those reflections, it looks like they're rendering at maybe quarter resolution, which is perfectly fine. I mean, you notice the reflections are a little blurry. They pass it off with having kind of dirty windows. That's how they can kind of excuse it a little bit. But that also helps save rendering space and, and time. Uh, so again, like not a big deal at all. I don't think it's a problem. But to get back to 60, let's go back into settings and let's turn DLSS on. Oh, it looks like webs are coming out of his butt. Do you see that? Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm going to set it to balance just so we can really push this and see what we can get. And voila, immediately we're back up much closer to 60 70 frames now of course marvel spider-man remastered when it came to pc it was an easy recommend especially if you had never played it before it's a really good game and you can have a lot of fun with it this game it's important to understand is sort of like a really big dlc it's using the same map basically just with a winter coat of paint over top of it it's meant to be a lot shorter it's holiday themed it's basically like the Arkham Origins to Marvel Spider-Man's Arkham City, if that comparison makes sense. Basically, you just need to go into it with an understanding that this isn't trying to be like a full quadruple A release. It's trying to tell a smaller story, a little more tightly and intentionally. It's not trying to be the biggest, craziest thing ever. But okay, let's see what this is like in some bigger budget cutscene looking moments. I, I guess, how does it run there? Well, again, if I pull up our performance stats, it, it floats right around like 40 during these cinematic moments, even with DLSS set to balance. Like, oh my God, I can't even tell you guys how much better this combat feels than Gotham Knights. Like, I, I've made the comparison between Spider-Man and Gotham Knights a few times because it's pretty clear that's what they were going for. They were trying to go for like, a DC version of that combat system, but with co-op and it just didn't work out at all. And this is just so much smoother. Oh damn, it feels like night and day. Okay, this is one of the coolest moments in the whole game, if we're being real. <laughs> this little chase sequence. Oh, it's just badass. Look at this. Into the parking garage, here we go, right into the mall. Boom, boom. There's those ray trace reflections coming in clutch. Oh, there's the Insomniac logo, gotta love it. Little nod, little nod. I mean, it, I, I gotta give him credit. This looks really good. Like, I don't know what I was expecting, but like, this is better than I anticipated. I I gotta, I gotta hand it to him. This is how you're supposed to do these PC ports. And it's just refreshing to see it done really well. So you know what? Props to the teams that worked on this because it's running pretty well. And I gotta say, I'm impressed. Oh, look who it is. He's a low energy menace. Too easy. Maybe. He's a weak minded. Oh. Hey, Jonah, what is he doing? Very fast. Menace. A feckless, treacherous, unhinged menace. Jonah. Right oh, I love him. I will say also, if you're noticing screen tearing on the video, that is not in like my display. That seems to be a capture card issue. So that's not actually a thing, just for the record. Now I gotta say, I initially, when I reviewed this game, was a little critical. I, basically I felt like it was not as good as I was hoping it would be. It's pretty short. The story is kind of blah and just, it's kitschy and campy and like at the time it wasn't what I was hoping for and it was because like this was one of the first major releases for the PlayStation 5 and I just felt that it was really underwhelming but what I can see now is that again it kind of fits into that Arkham Origins space where it it isn't necessarily trying to be the best thing ever it's just trying to be 
like a, a fun alternative. It's something, something different, you know, it's, it's something different. And so while this might not be like game of the year material, it still is like relatively fun. And so while it may not be like game of the year definitive material, at least for when it launched, it still is worth playing, you know, and there's something to be said for like a solid eight out of 10 game or a solid 8.5 out of 10. Like it doesn't do anything crazy different or that remarkable, but it's just a solid game that's worth your time. That's kind of where this lands. And I mean, fidelity wise, just like, look at this. This is crazy sharp. I don't know if it comes through on YouTube or anything, but like the first time I saw footage of like Demon Souls running on PS5, I was like, wow, that, yeah, that looks next gen. That's, that's crazy. And even when I saw Miles Morales running at like checkerboarded 4K on the PlayStation 5, I still thought that looked really, really good. This is on another level though. And it kind of brings back the, the weird, Thing that now the definitive place to play a lot of these PlayStation games is on PC, which is just crazy. You know, like what, what world are we living in now? That the best place to play like a PS5 game is now on PC if they happen to have ported it over. It's just, it, it's funny how it works. I mean, basically this isn't supposed to be like a comprehensive review of the game. I already did that. I, I could revisit it, but I don't think I'd have anything that different to say now that I didn't say back then. You know, back when this first launched, I was pretty critical of it. And that was mainly because I felt that it was just a really underwhelming PS5 release because I was hoping for something to really showcase something that the PS5 could do that no other console could do. And there just isn't really anything like that in this game. But you know, that I will completely admit is a, a fallacious line of reasoning and, and critiquing. And it's something I'm trying very hard to shed in my my newer reviews and critiques, which is basically to not critique a game or, or review a game against my hopes for it or my perception of what I want it to be, basically. Like, it's unfair of me to say, hey, I don't think Miles Morales is that good because it's not Marvel Spider-Man 2. It's not, it's not like the full AAA package. It's like, yeah, it was never supposed to be. You gotta review it and look at it from the perspective of what it is and what they were trying to do with it and evaluate that against the price proposition and things like that. And that's where I think Miles Morales actually fits a, a really solid niche. And that's people who are looking for a Spider-Man game to play that's a little smaller in scope, that isn't trying to be the biggest, baddest thing ever, but that rather is just like a feel-good romp in the Spider-Man hay and uh, is, is successful in that pursuit. I'm sorry, my face is covering uh, Peter Parker's redone facial structure. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, this does have the new model for Peter Parker. It's, I mean, take it or leave it. I don't, I don't know why some people are so upset about it, but you know, well, there it is. I will say one of the things I'm most hyped about with this is that there is full Steam Deck compatibility, meaning that you can play this game on the go, just like with Marvel Spider-Man that released on Steam just a month or two ago. And I think that that's absolutely tremendous. I mean, getting it on Steam and PC is great to begin with, but being able to play games like this on the go is just even better. It's so cool. Oh, and then they say the oath. To protect this city. I promise. I promise. That's it. I do so solemnly swear to protect that this city. That's a real thing. Why do totally. politicians do that? Definitely you know, like they always hold their thumbs like this, like they're cradling their thumb and they're, so I did not funny. have sexual relations with that photocopier. You know, why do they always do that? It annoys the crap out of me. You're going to see, it's like, you know, the Trump thing, you know, the biggest win, the best win, you know, it, you know. We do a little trolling. It's called, we do a little trolling. I, I, everybody does it. But like this, this especially annoys me. It looks like you're trying to drive like some weird bicycle. It drives me crazy. Who's the super cool and then look at this fluid transition. Oh. We're totally getting copyright struck. If we get copyright struck right there, we're just going to replace that music with uh, like some something royalty free. So Jacob, go ahead for that. But for real, this game looks tremendous. The port is running very stable. And while I could like nitpick about little things like, oh, it's it doesn't run at smooth 60 when you're rendering it like full, very high settings, you know, ray traced, whatever the crap. But I mean, we're pushing the game to the absolute limits when we do that. It's reasonable to see the game struggle a little bit managing that because i personally am totally fine with developers building their games 
in a future-proof way, where future hardware will be able to continue pushing this game to the limit. And I am just totally fine with that. I mean, this by itself looks tremendous. You gotta give it some credit. But there you go, just a little bitty taste of what this port has to offer. It's uh, really, really solid. And I, I gotta give the whole team that worked on it credit. They did a, a pretty stand-up job as far as I can tell. As always, if you wanna hear my extensive thoughts, I've got the full critique available on the channel. I'll have it linked in the description box below so you can check that out if you're interested and wanna hear all of my my thoughts on this game story gameplay all of that good stuff as always like the video if you enjoyed it make sure to sub if you want to see more content like this and always recommend in the comment section if you have another game you'd like me to try or review i'm always open to suggestions and as always head over to luke stevens live which i'll have pinned in the description box below so that you can see us streaming these games every monday wednesday friday or if you can't make it to the streams we have stream highlights and clips and things that don't make it onto this channel posted over there there's a ton of content like literally literally two to three videos a day. So go check it out. But that's it for me. Let me know if you'll be picking up Miles Morales on Steam in the comment section below. I'll be interested in hearing how many of you guys will be jumping on this. Much love. I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.